Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a guide on Confederations for Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires, which is something I'm sure a lot of people have struggled with during the course of their own campaigns. Especially as certain races concerned the Dark Elves, Greenskins, and so on and so forth, achieving a normal confederation when you're playing a campaign as Malekith can feel fairly frustrating, especially when we're talking about the major factions. Now, the way Creative Assembly has decided to handle confederations in the game is pretty frustrating. I do have to give credit to DF name here on Reddit for the post he made, data mining, figuring out exactly what's going to work, what's not going to work. It's one of these things I already knew beforehand, but it is nice to have just a list of things and to understand how things are going to work. So, let's talk about confederations. The first thing and the one thing that's going to matter the most in terms of a confederation is having good diplomatic relations with a faction. Though this only counts towards about 150. So right here, I can confederate Karen Carr and I only have 50 relations with them. But having friendly relations with the faction, having things like trade agreements, and aggression pacts, military access does count. Having military and defensive alliances does not necessarily count for that. Though you can form a defensive alliance just before confederating a faction, as long as you don't end the turn. So over here I can form a defensive alliance and I can still confederate Karen Carr because it will be recalculated when you click that end turn button. So good relations obviously counts, but it only goes all the way to 150. And when you get to 150, your baseline evaluation will be minus 30. Right now it's minus 50 with Karen Carr, but I can still confederate them for another reason. While I am at war with various factions, I am at no risk whatsoever of getting wiped out. Whereas Karen Carr is just about to lose everything to Ali Fanar. So that's one of the things that does count. St faction strength. Are they winning a war? Are they losing a war? Are they gaining territory or have, are they just losing territory in the campaign? That does factor in in a significant faction, uh, fashion. So, for instance, Karen Carr over here, they started with all of this territory and they've been losing territory to Ali Fanar. They're about to lose the Black uh, Creek Spire over here. They only have an army of a couple of units. Ali Fanar is obviously in a position to wipe them all out very, very easily. He's got his items. He's in a very strong position. So, because of the faction strength, I am faction strength, strength rank 16. They're strength rank 203. That does factor in. Good relations with high strength ranking and with a perilous situation for the faction you're trying to confederate will create a situation where they're willing to accept confederation. No problem. And yeah, in this case, I think I'm just going to disband this entire army and create a new one over here under a Drelord and get some shades and actually even get some dark shards over here. That is one of the ways to... My yeah, uh, handle confederation in, pr in yes. particular with the minor factions. You don't even this declare war on their enemies Please unless you want to. You don't declare war on their enemies, but what you do end up doing uh, is now, now. you are significantly stronger than they are, you've got good relations with them, and you are able to uh, basically save, save them from complete and utter annihilation. That is one of the ways to do confederations, and it works with almost absolute certainty in every campaign if these minor factions are getting wiped out for virtually every single race. Now, Dark Elves do not like each other. That's one of the things to point out. Uh, they have a minus aversion of 10, which isn't significant, but it's enough to create issues in your campaign. And also, of course, when you confederate the faction, even if it's a minor faction, you get minus 40 diplomatic rela uh, relations with uh, other factions of that particular race. So, that is one of the ways to do it when minor factions. Keep in mind, one of the things to understand here is that there is a penalty introduced whenever a faction takes over territory. So, Malice Darkblade over here, um, although if we look at the diplomatic relations and faction strength, he is significantly weaker than me and I have good relations with him. The simple reality is that right now, he would not be willing to confederate under any circumstance because he's winning territory. Now, how do you overcome that in order to confederate a major faction? Well, if you're dependent on the campaign situation, dependent on the campaign plan you have, you might have to screw over yourself in terms of your campaign plan to achieve it. What do I mean by that? Well, 
let's say you wanted to let's say you are playing uh you're playing this particular campaign and you wanted to confederate Helebron. now you could may you could feed her money slowly but surely and eventually get a defensive alliance military alliance she ends up in a war with sigvald maybe valkia and she ends up losing now when that happens when she does start losing, she will be far more likely to confederate. Assuming she doesn't have the penalty for taking territory. The problem with this particular plan is, one, she might just seize one single region from the enemy and that will completely destroy your plan and she might even get wiped out before she's willing to confederate just because of the penalty of seizing territory, which lasts seven turns. But beyond that, there's an obvious issue here. Declaring war on, say, the Demon Prince and declaring war on a bunch of factions surrounding, um, uh, surrounding, um, uh, 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 surrounding, uh, over here, Malice Darkblade is one thing that can work to a certain extent. While that certainly can work, it is another thing when you're trying to confederate the faction that's close to you. So the problem is, if I wanted to, say, confederate Helebron, then the best thing I could do would be to declare war on, to make an alliance with Helebron and then declare war on, um, on uh, Valka and Sigvald. That may end up working, but I took Rond over here, the Spite Wolf Peak, so I would actually end up being the one dealing with Valkia's armies, which is not an ideal situation at all in in this uh, given the circumstance i could have traded i could trade the entirety of the spiteful peaks Don't to Hellebron, deal with, with the penalty in a campaign have her at war with uh, get military alliance have a war between myself valkia and then sigvald and maybe even with Alif and Ar joining in the fray in that that might just tilt the scales enough that Hellebron is willing to surrender but then you'd be left dealing with valkia sigvald and Alif and Ar. and you don't have to this is just an example. You don't want to do so. You want to win your campaign. So in this case, confederating Hellebron early on would be a significant issue in the campaign. It would slow me down in a fairly substantial way. But let's say I do want to get Hellebron, yeah, then just sell her the spiteful peaks. Actually selling territory to factions does not count against uh, you in a confederation in a confederation. It's only when they actually take territory themselves that does have uh, impact and that's the important bit so for instance over here if i start selling the uh, spite of all peaks like let's what say i start selling ron got to, getting a military uh. alliance i would do so slowly but surely i could end up in a situation where i might just be able to confederate her but keep in mind she but keep in mind faction strength the more territory you give to a faction, the, the higher chances they are that their faction strength is going to increase relative to yours. So it may not necessarily end up going that well. I would say it's probably easier to confederate Malekif than it is to confederate Halibron. Like if you're playing Halibron, it's easier to confederate Mal uh, Malekif than the other way around. Even though as Malekif, you do get that 20 diplomatic relations with the High Elves. It's just because of the campaign dynamics and play over here. Like, Malekith is going to be a war with Ron Brindle. You might trigger a war between him and Valkia. You can take advantage of that, and he might end up in a very strong defensive position. A war with factions that you're not at war with, personally. And that is something you can absolutely take advantage of in a campaign in order to achieve a confederation. So the same principles that apply with confederating minor factions apply with major factions. It's just that major factions have... The possibility of not only surviving but winning their wars. Hellebron can defeat Sigvald and Valkia. Hell, she could potentially win against Sigvald, Valkia, and Alifanar at the same time. She might be reduced to a very small uh, bit of territory in Harkonnet, but she is likely to survive for a very, very long time, and she might be trading territory back and forth, back and forth, which would prevent her from being willing to confederate. So, what I so what you can do over here with Malice Arcblade and gain him for a confederacy is per, is something that wouldn't work with Hellebron. Sometimes you just got to play the long game. What about Marafi, just as this example? Well, with Marafi, it depends. Is she going to lose the war versus Estankia? That is a fundamental question that needs to be asked here. 
she might, if she's losing the war, she's going to be on the back foot. She's not going to be taking territory. She's going to end up being weaker. She's going to lose army. And there, is, there does seem to be a major debuff when a legendary lord loses their main army. So you might confederate them, but they won't have anything to offer. Okay. What if you want to play the long game? Well, if you want to play the long game in a campaign and you don't want to confederate weak-ass factions just to get their legendary lords, then the best thing to do is to ensure they are not taking a substantial amount of territory. They take some, yes, but they don't take a lot. So, for instance, let's say you're playing campaign as Tyrion. No, actually, I think Alariel is a better choice. Then what you want to do in a campaign as Alariel is take out Safari yourself, take out Kalador. That way, Tyrion will just be stuck in a tame. And he will be a prime target of Confederation, because he will not be taking territory. Sure, the AI will still have cheats on any higher difficulty, but because he only has one province, there is a limit to how far the AI is willing to cheat. The less territory an AI controls, the less potential they have, the less faction strength they have, the easier they are to confederate. When they're not constantly taking territory, the easier they are to confederate. Now, I've stated in another video that making a military alliance with a faction is not necessarily going to work well for your confederation. And it, and it does have its drawbacks, because when you ally a faction with a military alliance, you probably will end up with the same enemies. And that's important. A faction having more enemies than you does help you towards confederating that faction. So, for instance, let's say Hellebron ended up in a war with Sigvald and Valky, and I didn't, and you certainly can't avoid that as Malekith, like you can even make... Um, non-aggression pact with Malkia if you so desire. But let's say I was able to take advantage of that situation, play those cards just right. Well, in that particular case, then as long as I still had good relations, plus 150 relations with Halibron, I would still be able to confederate her. Assuming she's actually losing against Sigvold and Falkia. That's the, that's the working assumption. And don't rely on that, because I've seen Halibron fight these three factions, Alif, Anar, Valka, and Sigvald, to a standstill. She might not win, though she can, but I've seen her fight these factions to a standstill before. And it isn't a great situation that you want to deal with in a, in a campaign. So sometimes, the best way, like, as I said, the best way, if you want to confederate uh, Halibron, would be to give her the entirety of the Spineful Peaks, declare war on Valka, declare one of Sigvald the moment you meet him, and hope that she, the Halibron is going to lose in that situation. Or declare war on Alif Anar as well. But here's the thing. If you do that, then clearly you uh, you will be confederating Karen Carr and then using that building a full stack over here to take out Alif Anar with a sneaky attack will not work. So you're in, your overall campaign will be slower. But if you play your campaign properly, you may end up in a situation where... Uh, you may end up in, in a situation where confederating these factions takes a very, very long time and requires you to build a massive empire. Though, generally speaking, being stronger, having good relations, and having the faction you're trying to confederate passive works. Them losing a war and losing territory can accelerate this process. What about threatening? Well, threatening can work, but it's going to hurt your reliability. So, just bear that in mind. That is all I had to say. Christine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. If you're interested in reading up on this, I have linked the Reddit post, uh, Reddit post below. Uh, special thanks to Protoss, Simon, uh, Kebby, Fengo, JK, Vakra, Elaine, and Alex, and to all of you who make it possible. If you enjoy my content, consider donating via PayPal, Patreon, all the links below.